drawing, master study in graphite and charcoal. The primary element that we want to focus on is value contrast. This is the master study I selected. Consider, remember the Carl Benjamin black pillars. Well, I want the same sort of contrast, at least five levels in my selection. Think back to your no tan, where it was the strong contrast of black and white. You want that plus four other, other levels. This piece is by James Whistler. It's called The Golden Screen. It was made during a time period where Paris was uh, revisiting and acknowledging and um, taking over, um, commandeering, colonializing Asian art and using it as their own. It's quite beautiful. There's so many quite beautiful images you can find throughout that time period. <clears throat> okay, so here, measuring out, there's a number of ways you can grid this out. I like to just do a rule of thirds so you can break it up mathematically or you can just, if you're doing direct the same size, you can just fold your paper as if it's a, a letter to your grandmother and then line it up just the same. If you want to scale up, then you need to make your grid in comparison to the grid on your piece of master copy paper. So here's my vertical lines for the tic-tac-toe rule of thirds. Now I need to get the horizontal lines and this will help me locate them on my master study and on my copy. Rule of thirds grid laid out. Now I can start breaking down the image. What will I use? Well, typically I'd like you to use some graphite and some charcoal. I like to use a kneaded eraser, but I also have a more pointed eraser. Uh, I like to use, what does that thing call it? A stump and the, oh my gosh, I forget what it's called. I'll have to look it up. All right. Areas with complexity, I break down into a smaller grid. First, um, I try to just break it up in half. <clears throat> make a micro grid. Since the figure's face is in this area, that includes finer details. So I only needed to break down the grid further in this single section. And beyond that, you can break it down even further. I fold it down to just that um, cell. Cell 1A. I like to hold it on top of it like an animation, old style animation technique. And I find point to point and I can create curves with numerous points, accurate curves. Now the remainder of the paper all around the edge, I just add on to the image, it's my little free wheeling what would happen if it went beyond. I don't usually leave that part white because it seems like it would be too fussy. Most often when you start with the figure, you'll start with the large blocks of area, if, especially if you're drawing in a figure drawing class of what's in front of you. But this is just a master study. I'm gonna go ahead, write where you would normally work last into the fine details because I'm just getting my line drawing, my contour drawing down. And on to 1B. Oh no, sorry. 
blocking in the areas of the darkest values, just how I explained in my thumbnail drawing video. Start with the darkest value first. And you'll notice I'll hold the charcoal pencil a number of ways, depending on the needs of the surface. Here's my blending stump. It's kind of early for blending, but I think I just got enthusiastic about it all and wanted to see how well my homemade blending stump worked. It's nice to use an edge of paper or one of these that I forget what it's called, I don't know why, um, to really delineate edges. See here how I'm holding the charcoal? Please practice holding it in this way. You can use more of your shoulder movement versus elbow, so it helps relieve some fatigue by switching up your grip. Yeah, I totally got enthusiastic. Just seeing like how will, can I use just the charcoal to blend it? No, later on I came in with a 4B for the background and a little bit of a 4 or 8B. So pretty soft, softer pencils, graphite. I like, you start with a charcoal. It's easier to overlay graphite over charcoal and lighten it versus laying charcoal over graphite. It won't work so well unless you really dig into it. I'm trying to preserve the lightest lights, the whites. As you see, it's good to have a piece of paper on your drawing hand side to keep your dirty charcoal wrist from getting your paper all smudged up. This is the charcoal pencil. All right, now on to 1B. So you start with the line work, contour line, copying the master study, deciding what blocks of value you are reining in, Think of just basic shapes, what you see in front of you. You can break it down to the most common shapes of the cylinder, sphere, and um, triangle, oh, cube, and triangle. Okay, blocking it in, got a minimal amount of lines down, and then blocking it in, all the details to come later. delineated the contour lines, adding a couple of details as I've already filled in my darkest value, a mid value. I was trying to just get the idea of like what kind of print, which is throughout this entire image. So along the edge of it, trying to figure out what is the essence of this print being represented and it's cloud-like. So I got the idea of that by practicing blocking in all the darks and you can see on this one I am a little bit looser and more warmed up than the first one. The first one was a little rusty. <laughs> so now I'm moving on to 1C Oh no, blending stump, finishing with the blending stump. When I'm done with all of the cells, then I will open it up to all of them to blend each other together. But as I go, I try to blend it with what is next to it, the cell that has already been completed next to it. One C. Lining it up 
for the figure. Walking in with the darkest value, connecting to the just accomplished cell. Trying to use the movement of my elbow and my shoulder versus my wrist. That will help me prevent fatigue. This back area of 2A is really kind of like an architecture cell. So the 1A was figurative cell, 2 or 1B was maybe darks and lights, value contrast, and fabric drapering, drapery. And then this 1A is all these architectural elements of... Uh, like one one point perspective with a vanishing point off to the left did the contour lines blocked in and then began to find my middle value through using my drawing stump All right, to B shows the bottom of the panel where it almost seems like an abstraction of space, but it's a screen sitting in a room behind a woman who's looking at art. That's why I like this piece subject matter wise. It fulfilled the qualities of being a full enough value contrast of one, two, three, four, five, all the levels. But then also it was a woman sitting here, she's observing and considering some artwork, some prints, wearing this incredible kimono-like ensemble. So just notice when I'm trying to aim for a curve or a straight line, I want you to really hone in and really pay attention to what you see in your image. Do that technique that I suggested in 1A of breaking it down further if you need to. I almost did that for 2B and probably could have benefited from it actually. I threw in some little circles beforehand in my drawing just to show where the little flowers are on the fabric. Notice how I'm holding my drawing implement and it can help me draw straighter lines, especially if it's like a post Starbucks or coffee situation as I do have a fondness for caffeine. Blending, finding the value, middle value, and then preserving the whites, preserving the light parts so we can still see where light is hitting an object and illuminating it. This is all about light, light of the sun, light of a tungsten light bulb, light of a candle, they all have a different effect, but they show the three dimensionality of a form. And here we are, representing Here we take it. a big jump. We finished 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, well, almost 2C. I've come in with the eraser, and any areas that have debris left on them, I'm wiping them off 
you can lift it with the gummy type eraser. And then I'm filling in more of the design work, the design elements of the cloud on this fabric. Um, the Using the stump is called a reduction method because you're erasing, you're taking away to create a lighter value. And then here I made a lighter value and then I added details. Boom, 3A, 3B, 3C, all worked out with the contour drawing, blocked in with the major dark areas, used the stump to get the mid values, and now I'm finding the darker values in the more detailed areas, these papers that are sitting on the fabric of this woman's dress. All right, looking pretty good. Then I get a chance to open up the entire image and start making it cohesive together. I can cover up my drawing so that it does not get messed up. Here are my pencils. There's graphite 7B, which I use primarily, and then 4B, or is this 6B? 4 or 6B is a nice in-between that I like to use. I really wanted to get this back value right. I feel like I don't access this value well with color, so I'm trying to hone it, I'm trying to practice it. Always have to continually practice. I love how the background blends into the coat, um, neckline seems like it would be satin or silk and it just blends with the background I don't think it does in the painting as the original painting was in color but I printed it out in black and white oh here's a good example you can see I use the graphite over the charcoal and it raises the value level so if the charcoal is a five then this value level is probably a three or three and a half with one being pretty almost white or white. You can do white if you choose. Um, let's see, yeah, drapery. Trying to show the illumination of folds of a fabric from a light source showing bits of darker areas to show shadow. I needed to lift some of these areas up. The value in the background currently is way too dark for the structure, but I can always change that by putting graphite over it, which I will later. Right now, I'm just trying to get the form down. And then the values behind it. Now on this area behind it, I'm getting with a 4B a nice mid value almost a three if I layer it a number of times. I need a much darker value there. It's just kind of like a placeholder, a reminder. Blending party. Blending, blending party. Blend and blend again. Blending party. Use a softer pencil if you don't want the line work of your crisscross, tic-tac-toe, rule of thirds lines to show. But I 
don't mind. It's a master study. I'm just supposed to learn from this. Learn from someone else's time of figuring out how to compose this painting, how to create the value contrasts. And a Pablo break! It's a Pablo! Okay, back to work. Blending, trying to get the cells to connect and seem seamless. Need a little work on this hand. Keep coming back to it. Use your kneaded eraser to lift, add charcoal or graphite where you need to. I'm coming to the end of feeling like this image is sort of coming together. I'm just adding another half hour of details. Lift the paper, do not slide the paper that you have on top of it so that you do not further smudge. I just look back and forth from the image to try to get the values down. And then, when you're all done, take some hairspray or this workable fixative. Use some fixative, go outside. Please be outside. Be outside in the sunshine, have some fresh air, and think of like, not the 80s kind of hairspray application, that may be more like the 90s, like you want it to stay in place, but you don't want it to be like hard as a rock. So spray it down, you can let it dry and spray it again, and you're done. For more tutorials, please subscribe.